Bonnie Channel. I'm Bianca. And I'm Byron. And today we are joined by a really very interesting <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> and like a game planner. <laughs> Extraordinaire. I don't, I don't really know what the title is yet. I'm not giving yeah. him a title. But since we've been in Dubai, we've been getting to know Chris. And he does a lot of events in Dubai. So we said, Chris, we need you on this channel we to tell our audience all about what you do and why he is the man to speak to when you're in Dubai. So, Chris Wright. Thank well, you very much for having me. <laughs> First of all, tell us who you are and what you do. Who I am and what I do. Yeah. It's a very hard answer to give for this question because I do a lot of different things. Um, but I'm from Liverpool originally and I've lived in Dubai just over seven years now. And I would say I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. That's it really. I'm like, multiple businesses. Um, I own six companies based in Dubai, um, all very similar, but different categories of business as well. Um, and it's mainly around hospitality, events, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, because we know a little bit more, so maybe I'll have to probe a bit. So you're one of the businesses you are in is the event space. Yeah. Tell us about that business, how you got into it, and what it does today. So my company is called The Right Group. And underneath the right group, we've got many different brands that I've created, um, which basically include brunches, ladies' days, pool parties, family brunches, like just many, many different types of concepts. And basically I create a brand and I will pitch it to a hotel, I'll pitch it to a venue, a beach club or a nightclub. And then I just get started on it basically and try and embed it into the Dubai market and make it a weekly thing where it just becomes the place to go on a specific day or night. Um, and that's pretty much what I do in Dubai like every single day. So are you creating the concept and then selling it to them or are you creating it and still managing the ticketing and the whole event planning? Main, I mainly, I own the brand, so okay. I, I, I will create a brand. So for example, a hotel like The Five, for example, they will say, we've got a gap on a Wednesday evening, we need to come up with a brand, a concept and I will come up with the name and the brand and the identity of it. And then I basically host that event and do the marketing and basically drive the, the sales, you know, to the bookings, come up with the campaigns, the videos, digital, artwork, everything mm. really, yeah. So I know from speaking to you before that that's not what you originally came to Dubai to do. No. So how did you find that niche in the market? So I've, I've always been a DJ. So ever since I was 12 years old, I was a DJ. Um, so when I was, uh, when I was <laughs> very young, um, I used to basically DJ at our kids, like kids parties basically. So I'd, I'd be like hired to do, like in school, there'd be like a poster on the wall and I'd have like my name on it. And mums and dads would hire me to basically DJ for their yeah. children's <laughs> parties randomly. And, uh, and it just become a business. So when I was, probably about 16, 17, I just got tired of obviously just playing at weddings and christenings and kind of wanted to go and be a proper DJ, go and DJ in the nightclubs and go around the world and, you know, DJ in front of a big crowd. So I went to IB for 18 and that's when I started to DJ, but I found it really hard because obviously it's a very competitive market mm. and especially when you go to Ibiza it's like being an actor and going to Hollywood, like yeah. it's, <laughs> it's hard to find a gig in Ibiza. So at first I was like, just DJing for free and you know doing little little jobs here and there in in bars and karaoke bars, which obviously not what I wanted to do, but you have to start somewhere. Mm. And then I just got to a level where I was like, how am I going to get into these bigger venues? How can I have my name on the flyer at the top and not you know small at the bottom? So I just sort of come up with an idea and I was like, I'm just going to do an event because then I can put my name at the top because that's, yeah. that's my event. Mm -hmm. So I did my first event and uh, we did it on in. Bora Bora Beach, uh, Delano's Beach Club, which was only a small event. And um, we basically just, we just did an event there and that's kind of how my name sort of come about. And um, my business partner as well, Billy, like we, we were both just doing events together and then it sort of just excelled from there really. And every time I would sort of see a venue that I wanted to DJ and I would go, I'm gonna really just pitch them an event. Like what's mm -hmm. the point of sending them my CD with my mix on because it's gonna get yeah. you know put to the bottom of the pile like everyone else's mix. So, I just thought let's just do events and it just kind of stemmed from that really of just wanting to be a DJ in a nightclub or the, or the best venues and then I kind of realised I was actually probably better at putting the events on than the DJ because <laughs> my passion wasn't 
my passion was there for the music, but at the same time, the money was better than the events sure. because, <laughs> as I realised as you get older, like unless you're a big, big, big DJ, money is not. You know, you'd have to be doing a lot of gigs to to earn yeah. a very good living off a DJ so, to be a DJ. So I kind of realised like I'll DJ, but mainly just focus on the events, and then it just turned into this crazy empire of events it's that. just mental like it's just yeah but how did you end up in dubai so you were there you were, you know uh, so i got to the point where when it, it like the brand was getting big like we, i've got a, one of the brands was called sin so it was getting really big and i'd be fair we were doing ocean beach and it was, it was just taking off and i was like what can i do in the winter because we're just mm-hmm. sort of going back home to england and doing nightclubs which you know nightclubs are starting to they were starting to sort of get a little bit bored and then loads of people start to go to bars so I was like I just don't want to be in England and plus I was getting really I was adapting to the the, the sun and the nice yeah. lifestyle of can, living in that. Spain so I kind of um I was like where can I go which is sunny now and which has a season that is like winter mm-hmm. and Dubai was come up in most conversations I have uh, I had about two friends and uh, yeah, two, two friends that lived here mm-hmm. um and they lived here for a couple of years and they just said, Chris, like you need to come to Dubai mm. in the winter. It's it's really good. It's like Ibiza, but obviously in the summer it's yeah. just too hot here, so it's seasonal. Um, and that was it. So I just came and packed my bags and booked a one way flight. And, <laughs> literally, and, one way literally. Flight. And, and then, but then I had to start all over again because when I got here, it was like me going to Ibiza when I was 18, but I was mm. 23 this time. So it was the same again. It was like giving me CDs out in bars, trying <laughs> yeah, to get a yeah. DJ gig yeah. because no one would give me an event because I'd never had any events mm. under my belt in Dubai. Yeah. So it's a lot harder to get events here than it is in Ibiza. Like in Ibiza, you can just go and knock on a bar and say we can we do an event on one of the nights like yeah. if it's in Dubai they have to go through a background check and mm. see whether you've done something credible if it's going to fit their brand if the hotel accepts it and mm. so it was like starting from scratch again but it took me yeah it, just, yeah. <laughs> so it took me a while you, to get to where it is how now. long have you, have you been building this brand now? Um, so I started I set up my company here about four years ago mm-hmm. and then it just sort of it was small it was like one event a month then two events and then three events and then now it's we do 60 events a month mm. <laughs> 60, 60 events a month yeah. I, want to, I want to repeat that because you say it's it's yeah. 60, 60 events, events and these events are busy we've been to a few a fair few of your events yeah. and um, <laughs> these are busy busy events so how do you manage the logistics like on, on Christmas Day you had seven events? Nine. Nine events. Nine. I actually thought I had eight, but I had nine when right. I can't sit there because right. I, yeah, I, I forgot about the second I was like, this is that much going on. Twelve hundred odd people. Yeah. I don't, I can't explain it. I've How got a very good team that? that manage it with yeah. me. Um I'm very fortunate to have good business partners as well. So it's it's about having a good team. You obviously can't do it on your own. I yeah. think I'd be digging an early grave if I did it all on my own, obviously. Sure. There was a time when I did do it all on my own before mm-hmm. I had an office and a team and everything. And I used to literally do, I'd probably say four, four a week, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe five. That was when I was literally on my own. And then I hired my first employee and then it just sort of grew. So it get, I, I don't know, it's, it's, once you've got it in set in stone and it's flowing and the brand's there and people know it, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's, it's easier than what people may think. I mean, it is, it can be stressful, but it's just, as long as everyone's delegated them to know what they've got to do and certain times you've got to be there and this has got, you know, content's got to be created, your rent marketing's got to go out, everyone has a role. If you master that, it, it does flow quite well. Would you say you have uh, a right hand man or lady in your team? that is your go-to person? Probably with business partners. Yeah. So every one of my business partners pretty much work as much as me. Like they do like, yeah. they do things that I can't do and I do things sure. that they can't do and we just sort of, we're a very good team and everyone involved in my businesses are just, they're, they're unique in their own way. They've got very good qualities that help me in yeah. things that I can't do or I haven't got time to do, so. I was asked this question the other day, do I have a favourite uh, mentee? And I said, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to have a favourite mentee. So I'm going to ask you a quicker question and say, do you have a favourite member of staff? We're not going to have to ask you who it is. They're all going to have a favourite, or a few favourites, no, a favourite 
Learn how he moves. I, I, I probably, I probably, I can't, I, no, I can't say that on camera. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a few that have, have obviously worked for me for a longer long than others. Sure. I've got like, like some new employees, obviously that you know we, we I haven't yet to see how they're going to be. <laughs> so obviously you know they're amazing now, and you know you, 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 I can't really say you know. Sure. Yeah. So. How how big is the team? Um, at the moment we are staff in the in the office probably around about sixteen to seventeen. Okay. Um, but as a whole, we probably have thirty staff, maybe thirty five, because we have an entertainment team and mm-hmm. we have freelance team as well that obviously do some freelance events, work and marketing and stuff like that outside of the office. So, all in all, yeah, about thirty five. Amazing staff that work for us. What would you say the most business. difficult part of running an events business is? Staying relevant mm-hmm. is the most hardest thing. The I think a lot of people will see what I do and think it looks quite easy. Like, you know, you go to an event and you party and you do this and you do that. I don't obviously party every day, but staying relevant, nothing is ever consistent. It's always going to change. I could open the best brunch on a Friday and it could be popping for six months and then a hotel will open next door, which Mm -hmm. has a better terrace with a better view Mm -hmm. and a better DJ and a better sound system or a better whatever, I don't know. And then, you know, then the customers then go to that one and then you're like, okay, what do we do now? So it's all about staying relevant, but that is the hardest thing to consistently keep going because nothing lasts forever in this game. Mm. And I think a lot of people who do try and get into events that they do think that it does, mm. they probably see it and go, oh, yeah, we're going to set up an event and it's going to make this amount. And it might make that amount for, for a month and they think, great, we're in the money. And then they go and maybe spend over budget or and then the next month it's gone quiet again. So it's you can't like if we have a good month, I don't get excited. Sure. I don't see that as gonna be the same next month. I don't know what's gonna happen. I really don't. So I just take every day as it comes. Do you think then do you because I don't I've looked online for similar brunch brunch events and stuff. Is there any do you have any competitors, would you say, that offer you know, at the scale and level that a, you do, a, on the a, scale a, a we range do. of different branches. Um, because just to clarify, you do like br- uh, family branches, ladies' nights. You know, so it's, it's, it's a variety of different, variety. different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and different price points. And it's in one place. I probably wouldn't say there's someone who does the same amount as as what what we do. And um, we obviously have other promoters in the city that obviously do that do events, but. I don't ever really see anyone as competition. I just see like we're all part of one business. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we are, you know, we, we are all trying to target the same clientele. But the same clientele can't come to the same brunch every Friday. So if they go to one brunch, they'll they're gonna go to my competitors' brunch one week, and then the week later they might come to mine. So mm-hmm. it's not it, it, it is competitive, but you don't I don't know I don't see it as competition because there's enough people in Dubai to go around. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If I was in Liverpool, I'd probably. Yeah, it, it feels competitive in Liverpool sure. because it's so small and the, the people who come there are just the local people, like mm-hmm. you don't really get tourists, whereas here, every week, there's, every day, there's fresh people arriving and mm-hmm. you know you don't know who they are, the different nationalities from all over the world, so mm-hmm. people don't just come to my brunch who are British, people don't come to my brunch who know me, they, people see it because we market it you know, to, to different people and the hotels that we work with, obviously they have in-house guests that go to them, so it doesn't, yeah, I don't, I'm not really, I don't ever see anything as competitive in a way, just I think everyone's just, we're all in it together really. Yeah. yeah. What would you say stresses you out? What, 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 what is your, yeah, you what out? gives you that stress? <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but I would say managing people. Yeah. It's I think the reality of the, I, I managing, managing staff and yeah. people, it does, it, it, it can be stressful because people are unpredictable yeah. and it's you know loyalty is an important thing to me yeah. so sometimes people aren't loyal or some people don't turn out to the way you want it to be yes. it, it can be disheartening it can be disheartening and it's not a nice feeling when someone you know yeah. does yeah. does something to you or whatever it doesn't it yeah so that that's my yeah. any everything else i i doesn't stress me out too much to be honest yeah. i, I kind of like it <laughs> we always say why did you do that <laughs> like why and we always sometimes struggle. Yeah. With, and they think it's with staff and with people. It didn't make any sense. Why did you do that? <laughs> do you ever get that feeling sometimes? Like um, it's just we just find it bizarre. But some sometimes yeah, but a lot of the time I I'm quite lucky. Like my my team kind of are delegated. You know their roles and responsibilities, so they can't really do anything that I'm gonna go. Whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, like that's yeah. not right. 
But I can imagine in venues, if I, well, I'm about to open a bar, so I'm gonna probably see this soon. Like I always see sometimes staff in venues or hotels and they do things at my event and I think, why would you say that to a customer? Mm. Or why would you do that? And that, but they're not my staff, so I can't say anything, yeah. but it will, it comes back to me and I'm like, mm. they say something to a customer that yeah. doesn't make any sense. And then like, sometimes that annoys me, but it very really happens. I'm quite lucky to work with good, sure. um, good, good people and good hotels and venues. So before we move on to talking about the other businesses, I want to ask you a question, which is going to be the annoying COVID question. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously lockdown happened for loads of people around the world and COVID and so on has prevented events from going ahead. How did you cope with that? How did you bounce back? And what was that period like for you? Um, it was probably the hardest time of my life. Like literally was the hardest time. I think a lot of people, I think, I think many people dealt with it in different ways. Some people were with their families. Some people have seen, oh great, I've got three months off, I'll just sit on the couch and watch the TV. <laughs> and some people like myself who live obviously in Dubai don't really have much support from that side of things because I don't have my family here, we don't have furlough, you kind of have to mm. make sure that you sort of stand on your own two feet. Having the responsibility of staff that live here who are underneath your sponsorship and you supply them with visas, being able to try and support them in some way was a challenge when we had no income. Mm. Um, obviously out here as well, it's it's hard because everything is kind of paid in invoices, checks, you know, everything is different. Mm. It's not like the UK where you kind of like have, you know, you get paid on time. It's like things are, take time because the establishments that you are working with are very big. Mm. So if you work with a hotel, like any hotel in Dubai, you've got, they probably have a million things to pay. So, you know, it's not like if you go and do an event in the UK and it's just one bar, you can, mm call the owner and say like where's the money <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's not as easy so when covid came it it put a strain on payments it put a strain on outstanding invoices that were owed to us from different venues and stuff which you know it is understandable that that was going to happen but at the same time it was really hard because we paid a lot of our costs out to make them events make that revenue to get paid that commission yeah, sure. and we haven't seen some of it even to this day, it's still mm -hmm. some pendant, some venues aren't even open. We've, we've got venues that have still closed because of COVID that have yeah, yeah, that yeah. Had to let all their staff go and make wow. them redundant. And unfortunately, like we probably might never see that revenue that we made from mm -hmm. six, seven months of events that we did with them. So a lot of money's been yeah. lost. Um, a lot of holidays that we booked for, well, I have a, another company called Inside Lifestyle, which is a travel company. We've had to refund a lot of people back of, for their holidays and we had weddings that were booked in with mm. 60 rooms in one hotel and you know we we'd had weddings organized through my events company where we'd supplied all the entertainment and all that and you know deposits wanting to get refunded like I, I, I'm quite soft as well so I've got like I'm not like brutal with things so a yeah. lot of people I was I just felt bad and I was like right we're gonna have to because we can't we can't you know we, we don't want to get a reputation for not paying people yeah. but even though by law and even in, in the contract or the terms and conditions we weren't actually technically meant to give people refunds for certain things it could be classed as credit when Dubai reopens but I just couldn't do that to yeah, people yeah. I wouldn't want that to done to me so that process was hard like that was it was like watching your bank balance just go down every single day With nothing coming With in nothing yeah. coming in and trying to support people and over here as well when we've got families to support it was hard because I, I was i was obviously trying to support myself as well but also my business partners have families and kids and whatever and you know it, it's quite a hard place to do that in dubai when when you have a business in dubai it is all very independent you are on your own it's not there's no government funding or anything like that really in Dubai. That's obviously, it, it's a tax free, obviously, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it has its bonuses, yeah, but you know, yeah. at the same time, you know, you don't plan for it, do you? So yeah. you just, yeah, it was hard. So the bar, tell us the bar. about the bar. Let's transition into the bar. <laughs> so the bar, um, before COVID, obviously this whole project was obviously going ahead. So the ambition for what we wanted to be at the moment is going to be a little bit, it's not going to be what, what we want it to be. So unfortunately, until COVID comes, it, you know, it's going to be a very controlled bar environment, but it's insane. It's probably the most, I would say, the most unique, like nightlife food and beverage concept I've ever seen in the world. Ridiculous. 
and I've been around the world and yeah. <laughs> seen a lot of venues. What's the concept? It's ridiculous. So the concept is basically it's the first nightlife destination in Dubai where you can go to 20 different bars without get leaving or getting a taxi anywhere. Mm. Uh, you can leave by going down a slide, <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. That's the last bar you'll probably go to because <laughs> uh, you go right round and then you've got the slide leading. Uh, there's three, three restaurants, 20 bars and one beach club. Um, so it's, it's very unique. Every single bar has its own fee and its own identity. So you literally travel the world in a way. You go from New York to Mexico, to Italy, to Japan, to Hollywood, mm. to Safe Shack, to Peaky Blinders Vibe Bar, like Irish Bar, like it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And how did you come up with that concept? What was the, was there like a light bulb moment? Was it a collective thing? So I, I didn't come up with the whole concept. I, I'm a, an investor in one of the spaces in there. So my concept, which I came up with, basically I got given a theme. So my theme was very un industrial because every bar was already set by the architect on what theme is going to be what. So my theme was very, it's very industrial, very underground. Mm -hmm. So my bar is called the Bronx. So I'm going with the New York vibe, very like, you know, New York City, very urban, very cool. Um, and yeah, so that was it with the, the concept itself. Um, the owner who's um, one of the business partners, he basically just wanted to create a space that was unique, that Dubai had never seen before. And he kind of seen a gap in the market for a one-stop destination for you know people to just go and not have to worry about traveling because in dubai it's very hard to go to different places and not like keep that vibe going because you've got to get a taxi and then and it's 20 30 minutes 20 30 minutes, minutes so you go to one good bar and then you go oh, what well, anyway, is that other bar but then it's a little bit of a distance so i think having it all in one space i think people are going to really enjoy the concept and the fact that it's very casual there's no guest list there's no mm. there's no there's no there's no dress code yeah. at all yeah. Yeah, yeah. like you can come to my bar in shorts and flip flops yeah, yeah. like you can come to the pool go to the beach club and then go around and go and drink in the Bronx yeah. Yeah. there's no like sorry not tonight you've got no shoes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you need to take your reservation it's just it's <laughs> just it's <laughs> not <laughs> Dubai yeah. it's very un Dubai which is <laughs> I, I think it's quite cool because I've worked in a lot of, I do a lot of events, which is very Dubai, and I like that type of event, but also I'm looking forward to sort of doing something that's a bit more casual, yeah. and just tapping into a new market as well, and seeing how that goes. I guess, for you, at the moment, you see, see the events, you have your team, and the hotels have their staff, this is going to be a complete U-turn, yeah. really, because you, you're managing everything, yeah. you're staffing, the events, everything, everything yeah. and I think that's going to have its different challenges but the question I want to know is I'm an entrepreneur and yes we do things for enjoyment and everything else but pounds and pence yeah. you know, in the bank will this be commercially more beneficial to you than the events business or I mean it's good it's, 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 that is what I want to know is it more commercially viable I hope it is <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, from what we're projecting and everything, yeah, it should be. Yeah. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do since I was probably 14 years old. Mm. Like, I've always dreamt of having my own venue. Mm. And I, I've i just worked so hard to get to that now, and it's took me a long time. But it, it, it's finally happening, and, and I'm really excited about it. But it, I do think it, yeah, it, it, it will be because it is mine. It's my own. It's not... A yeah. lot of the time when you do events, you do, you know, you get, you have to, you get a percentage of it, you get a very small percentage of the revenue or whatever, so yeah. and it, it, it's hard to... And they have to sign off, you don't get the creative... Yeah, yeah and you don't get... Control. Yeah, you don't really get... And you don't get the... the, the, the graph in, what's the word? Like, the, yeah. people don't acknowledge it as much, like, they mm. see you as that's your event on that day and that's it, mm. whereas the fact that I've got something of my own is just mm. sort of... It's something that I really want to really put a lot of passion and energy into and, and I'm excited to, to grow venues and start mm. doing a lot more because I feel like I've learned a lot over the years to understand the market and I've, I pretty much do a lot for venues that the venues can't do themselves so, yeah. so it's a good way of sort of seeing how I can now do what they do by managing staff and you know managing bar staff and I've never done really that before properly 
So I'm excited to see how it goes. <laughs> but you've got to take risks. Yeah, yeah, who knows? I might go after a month, right? I'm going back to the fence. No more opening bars. You've done your own events there, anyway, right? Well, everything, that's the good thing. That's the one thing I'm excited about. Like, I know I've got, I'm going to make sure that's going to work. Because yeah. that's what I do every day. So yeah. I'm excited to to get, you know, my, my, I call my people, my, my, my clientele, my following, my, yeah. you know, whoever comes to my events, I'm excited to show them something that's my own and sure. let them know that, you know, it's, they, they, they're always welcome to come and check it out and, and just, I'm excited to show people it's something I've been waiting to do for a very, very long time. So what's really interesting about that concept is, I guess you're still reliant on the other bars mm -hmm. creating good events. Yeah for people to want to yeah. move around yeah and the football yeah everyone's got you can actually do events for them too <laughs> well, I think, I, think, I, think, I think some of the venues in there they're excited to have me on board as yeah. well because obviously i've got a lot of events in dubai and i've got a good following of people that come to my events so it'll just help everyone i mean the whole the whole concept is one business in a way um even though obviously we are each venue we you know it's our venue and it's our 100% ours but at the same time we are all helping everyone mm -hmm. because it's an open space so it's not in a closed venue where you know you go in and that's it like you can just wander off into the next bar which is really unique and it's 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 mad because my bar is actually next door to the champagne bar so it's like going to <laughs> yeah, yeah, urban New York yeah. City and yeah. then going into a champagne lounge yeah. by just stepping your foot over the line it's just <laughs> that's what's cool about it and yeah. then I think the funny thing as well if people don't like that vibe and you've got a friend that just wants to drink champagne, you can go and go in that bar. Yeah, see you in a minute. <laughs> and then I think that's what's cool about it. So I think people are going to love that, that it's different. And if you've got someone who wants to just have a pint of beer and then the Guinness, then they go to the Irish bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's cool. I'm excited to show. So it's funny, go ahead. I just want to ask about the other businesses. So just quickly, we've got Inside Lifestyle. What does that do? So Inside Lifestyle, it's a travel company. Mm -hmm. So basically we plan people's holidays and we organise their hotels and experiences in Dubai. So when, when they come to Dubai, whatever they want to do, we can organize for them, but we kind of tailor make the holiday. So that whatever they're doing is, is very bespoke. It's, it's unique, it's the best price. And it's, it's like, obviously we, it's very competitive in Dubai. There's a lot of different things. People tend to not know where it's good, mm -hmm. which is the best desert safari to use, which mm -hmm. is the best place to go, you know, on jet skis. So we kind of tailor make a website that is dedicated for the first time comes to Dubai, who don't know what to do. Love that. Um, so that's Inside Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then Secret Parties is Secret Party. So it's all our events that we do, Secret Ladies Days, brunches, uh, different, we just do yeah, a lot of different yeah. events. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite brunch? My favorite brunch. Ooh. I feel like I know the answer to this. I love the Versace. Versace. <laughs> I really love the Versace. And, and a lot of people, a lot of people when I ask, they like Secret Garden brunch because they like, they like going, they just like the concept and mom was only in a different but i don't know i just love i love versace i just get a really unique vibe and mm. i don't think anyone's ever done a brunch like that in dubai mm. it's a very unique brunch there's never i've never seen a brunch of an opera singer so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah which i think is really cool yeah, really cool. <laughs> the opera singer. yeah oh god does he really is he really uh does he really speak he's not italian now <laughs> <laughs> When I first met him, he did not speak. That's an out of Italian, even his accent, I was like, okay, we're going to work on that. So I started practicing with him, and I was sort of training, and I was like, hello, everybody. But he's actually not at all. We were speaking to him, and we were like, no. He's the most least. Italian <laughs> person you ever <laughs> But he's got the best energy. He's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. he's so fun, and he, uh, we have such a good. I, I, that's why I uh, probably enjoy going to the brunch. Yeah. We just have such an amazing little entertainment team and events yeah. manager, and which it's just, just and the staff are so friendly there, and yeah. just it's it's cool. Yeah. So you're saying sorry before Barry interrupts. Yeah, so secret, so secret brunch, secret is parties, inside lifestyle. inside lifestyle, and Bash Events, which is an, an entertainment agency, so okay. we recruit entertainment. Uh, we recruit artists, so basically we're, if a hotel needs entertainment and they need a singer, a band, a DJ, anything at all, it can be, we basically supply mm -hmm. that as an agency because it's like a recruitment agency, so artists come to us and then we suggest them to venues and we sort of, Excellent. yeah, do yeah. that. Um, and then Family Brunch Dubai, which is basically family brunch, obviously, yeah. um, we do different family brunches, we do one of five, JBC, Versace, um, and we sort of 
tailor-made parties as well from that so we do children's birthday parties and stuff mm. like that going back to my old roots yeah, <laughs> come yeah. back to it i'll say that was the first thing i did when i was younger <laughs> um and then so the ladies day so ladies day is it, it's its own company in, in a way because we kind of like i created that brand um it was the first ever ladies day in dubai to do it like it wasn't a concept and i basically created it with zero gravity when i was working at zero gravity and it just become this basically it, it just become a set in stone as a yeah. day it, it's an event and every beach club has a ladies day now yeah. which is i'm really quite proud that i actually come up with the idea and now yeah. everyone does it it's quite cool so um we do that so we do we do different ladies days in different venues um and then the right group so the right group is kind of i have different products under it so i have like a brand called cleanse which is like a uv sanitization and um, charging box so we have like different products on that um and we just sort of with the right group we do a lot of marketing and stuff so i come up with i do like i can direct music videos we come up with tv advert campaigns i get products and brands coming to me saying do you want to do collaborations and you do pop-ups and events and we help endorse brands like pretty little thing we've done stuff where we've, we've endorsed them into our events and created campaign videos and stuff like that so just yeah, very I love diverse. It. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I know it's, it's so administrational when you start and you say, what's your title? You're like, entrepreneur. Because yeah. <laughs> there's just so many yes. things that you're yeah. doing. Yeah. It's so fantastic. So I was going to say, 2021 is round the corner. Yeah. Um, and we are quite big believers on goal setting yeah. and, of course, planning. Yeah. So do you have any goals for 2021 that you'd like to share with us? Any goals? Mm. Um, I know some goals are <laughs> I know I like to tell my goals. I know. <laughs> because then you're going to get me competitive and you're going to step ahead. No, no, no. Tell us what they are, the, 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 the business the, the business, the projects are. But I guess you can still... I, my, my, I would say my goal yeah. is to continue keeping people entertained in Dubai and giving them new events and concepts that they love going to and and just keep growing the brands sure keep keep them relevant and keep them consistent and growing the team helping people and giving them jobs and helping people fulfill their dreams if they want to you know work in a certain industry or work in a certain you know business so it's i think that's that's motivating as well it's i do lo love to see grow the team i go into the office and it's just we've got so many staff and i just think it's crazy yeah. that they all work with me every day and, yeah. and they're here because i've you know obviously help them you know get a job in, in this industry and do what we do it's so i would like to do more of that and just sort of keep growing and that's the, so that's the from, goal. Um, <laughs> having a little peek at your instagram you know every now and then i yep. see you know quite a lot of uh uh well-known people yeah so how first of all do you connect with these these people okay and um i'll ask the second one after because yep. the second one's cheeky so i'll ask <laughs> how do you connect with these people how do i connect um I think through Inside Lifestyle, obviously the, the, we use we do influencer marketing to obviously to promote the the company and the brand, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the time we, we we get messages from influencers that want to come on a trip and they don't know how to do things and a lot of the time sometimes they want to have that guidance and they want someone to sort of give them like look this is what you're gonna do mm -hmm. and in return we'll promote you and you know and sure. that's how it works. And then a lot of the time we just kind of get connected when we're I'm out and about because obviously I'm I'm a very busy guy. I'm always in an event. I'm always out and about. I don't sit in the office every day. I'm in events most of the time, and I, so I'm I'm always meeting people. So when I get introduced to someone, it's always I think for them they obviously enjoy what I do. So they you know it's a good connection to have as well. So they I will always make sure you know they get looked after and we can sort them out like like anyone no matter if they're an influencer or not well mm -hmm. I'll do my best to look after anyone if they're coming to my event um but we just sort that's how it just yeah just through everything just meeting people and connecting through in, inside lifestyle so the second part to my question is do you have a favorite that you've enjoyed spending time with a favorite mm -hmm. influencer yeah if so who are they okay and why and why? Mm. Okay. You're like these kind of today, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not like you. It's happened, it's <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, there's, some, there's something about Something's happening. <laughs> you know, 
No, because he's, he gets a lot of interesting yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that. And there are that, some on your page more than others. That are not reachable, perhaps, to the average person. Yeah. So, so maybe you can say the top five that he The top leave, five. Yeah. <laughs> that makes, that makes if, if they're not on this list, yeah. then they're not on this list. I, I always I always say that a lot of people know that I'm really really good friends with Vicky Patterson. She's one of my very 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 good friends. She's one of my best friends, and she's very very supportive. Like me and her speak all the time. She was calling me through lockdown. Like she's got my back all the time. And it, we me and Vicky have known each other a really long time. So when we first started doing Inside Lifestyle in Ibiza, she was one of our first guests. So she was like. She, she was she was really she was obviously still big now but she was really big at the time so we obviously collaborated with her and then i just got to know with her i got to know her and she, we just hit it off like we're just really good friends and yeah so vicky's so for definitely those who don't know who she is and vicky. even i'm terrible like yeah so vicky patterson uh, so she won i'm a celeb to get me out of here oh, um cool. she's on loose women she does she's done a lot of tv she's been on a lot of tv programs um I'd say Joey Essex, who's actually staying in this hotel right now. I think he's just <laughs> he's here now. Um, Joey, Joey's a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's really lovely. Um, Alex and Olivia are really good friends of ours as well. Um, there's loads. Honestly, like, I, I'm not saying it because I was going to say what yeah. 10 <laughs> But actually, really, it's mad because people see them on holiday with us. Yeah. And I don't know if people think they're just with them because they're on holiday. They're actually really good friends of ours. They, 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 they come out with us, like, whenever whenever they, they're over, even if they weren't collaborating, they, we, we still meet up. Like, sure. sometimes yeah. we can't collaborate with certain people because they can't or they're in a contract or whatever. We're still... They still support us, or they've got our back, and we and, and we've got a lot of really good friends that have you know that that, that stuck by us even during these times. Obviously, when mm -hmm. we weren't doing so great, obviously with the travel industry being shut down, we've we, mm -hmm. we we've always got good support around our friends who are, who are in the influencer yeah. game and in, in you know in the TV industry. So I I can't really. Nice no, one. I've been told. They're all, they're all, they're all amazing. I love them all. <laughs> so, what's, uh, what was your, what has been your biggest lesson learned? Biggest lesson journey of being an entrepreneur. Um, just be careful who you trust. Mm. Mm. I think that's a big thing. For me, it's, I, you, you get a lot of people in the industry, obviously that like to compete or take advantage mm. of the situation and do what they want to do and it is what it is, business is business. So I don't think, you know, most of the big entrepreneurs in the world have probably got a, done well for being Mr. Nice Guy. Mm. Unfortunately, that's something that I kind of am sometimes mm. and I need to maybe learn a little bit more to, to be a bit more like grounded on what a, you know, what, what a, like what a support and what to do. But at the same time, trust, I think that's just, for yeah, me, I just yeah, think, you trust. It, yeah, I think mm. definitely you've got to have your wits about you in this industry of who's, you know, who's actually got your back and who hasn't and who's supporting you and who's actually just wanting to work for you because they want to go and do their own thing eventually or whatever. Sure. And if yeah. that's the case, it's it's quite hateful when people yeah, do yeah. do that because it doesn't, it's, yeah. yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Mm. But you've got to take it on the chin mm. and learn from it and mm. just be strong about it. And, yeah. Any advice to fellow entrepreneurs thinking about either starting in business or mm -hmm. even in similar industries to yourself? Yeah. Okay. Because everyone not necessarily in Dubai. Not necessarily in Dubai. Come to Dubai. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone wants to be in events, I feel like. Everyone wants to do it. They don't realise how... Everyone wants to do it. Yeah. I think people think that it's, it looks like the most funnest job in the world because you get to go to events and there's a bottle of vodka waiting for you yeah. and you go yeah, on your yeah, table. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 not at all. Like, I think the hardest challenge when you, for an entrepreneur, I'm going to give advice to someone who wants to do what I do is you can't do it unless you have a bit of cash flow. Like, mm. you need to have money in the bank. Like, don't set an event up with no money. Mm -hmm. Like, save your money and then do your event because you don't know what's going to happen. You might sell it out, but it doesn't mean that as soon as the second someone buys that ticket, it goes in your back pocket and you mm. don't spend it. You've got to wait, you've got, to wait, you've got to invoice, you might have cost that occur during the way, something might go up, mm. something might change, wrong, yeah. something might go wrong. Mm. So you've got to not pull all your eggs in one basket because you just never know. It's like anything, like when, you know, I think that's why sometimes people 
who, you know, you, you do like your security, if you do have a job, you know what you're going to get at the end of the month, and that's great, and that's what most people like doing, but at the same time, if you do want to step outside that and sort of take a risk, just make sure that you've saved some money, because in events, yeah. it's not, it's yeah. not easy, mm. it's not yeah. easy. That personal survival budget. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like, I would never go and do something that's very outrageous, like, on a big scale, if I didn't know that I had this coming in or this coming in. Mm-hmm. Y- it's just not worth it because yeah. it can hit you in the face and then you're left with nothing. So mm-hmm. it might seem like a great idea, you know you're gonna sell it out, but you don't know what's gonna come. The obstacles yeah. that come about, especially the rent, could rain. Yeah. No, it could be a dry day. It really, yeah. A it pandemic could come. <laughs> it rained on Christmas Day. 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 So you've got to be prepared for stuff like that. <laughs> Not even rage, just be, any food. I'm not damn it. Any food. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. there's just, oh, yeah, there's just, you've just always got to be prepared. <laughs> so two more from me. So do you have any questions for us? And then we're going to do a quick fire and just ask some random questions. Question for you guys. Um, what, what advice would you give me mm. on how to stay relevant from someone from yours, because you've been to my events, mm-hmm. so you're a cust- you've been a customer, you've come, you've seen it. What would you suggest me to do from your perspective and from your entrepreneurial perspective? I think, um, other than hire us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the strategy. I think when I was in London, I don't know if, I don't know if there's enough marketing to the UK about you in advance of okay. coming. Okay. So I think when you go to, you're thinking about going to Dubai, and I'm going to obviously write a whole article about being here and what it's been like, but there's not enough of those out there okay. about work to do when you come here. Okay. So if by the time you've reached, if you're only really coming for four or five days, you can, miss you can yeah. easily or miss, you book else. or you get, you book yeah. something else, yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, you yeah. missed a Friday, you don't realise Friday is so important. Yeah. If you're a Londoner, you've never been to Dubai, yeah. you don't know yeah. that what days are pivotal. Knowing that, and then maybe just um, from a music perspective, making it clearer what genre of okay. music is at each branch. I've had that before. <laughs> so yeah, no, you're right on that. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it doesn't for us, we're it's, like, we're it's, quite it's, connected, so yeah, you don't yeah, mind. You don't mind, it's good people, saying, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was at one of your events yeah. and the guy was complaining the whole time, like, yeah. well, what is this music? Yeah. And it's like, if he had known, if he, had known. he would have chosen an alternative yeah. branch. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm being. I think that's a great answer, that's a great question. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> What was your final? Quick fire one. Quick fire. Okay, go on. So, uh, we're going to ask you some quick fire questions. Okay, go on. Race me, Tom. And look, we're going to start with this one. A night in or a night out? Night in. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty (laughs) awesome. Seven nights a week. A night out for me is work. Yeah. If I go out, I'm in work. So, it's not classed as a night out. Okay. Yeah. And if I wanted a night off, why would I go to a nightclub when I'm in a nightclub every night? Mm. So, night in 100 billion percent. Favourite food? Chinese. Favourite designer? Um, brand? Okay. Gucci. Gucci? Yeah. Okay. It's just diverse all the time. I feel like I've never seen you wearing Gucci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you wear a lot. You see me in Versace quite a lot and you can't wear Gucci in the Versace. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Especially on TV. Mmm. Wakes me up. Have you tried the one at Chinque? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the best espresso ones. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Tea. Okay. Are you an early riser? Yeah. What time? I don't really drink coffee. I go for about seven. Okay. I blame you for your, I guess your events ain't really late. They're not really late. late some, late. some are, some are, I'll finish about two, two in the morning. Mm. Um. I don't go to a lot of the events too late anymore. Like mm. I don't, I'm used to there, when yeah. I had to be there. Mm. But now that you've got event managers that help you do that, they obviously they're the ones that have to stay till the end, which mm. they enjoy doing, obviously. Yeah, so that's their, that's, that's the yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't physically go to an event till three in the morning, then get up at seven and then do meetings and yeah, like, whatever, exactly. and then go again to it. just, yeah. Doesn't work. I, I, I hit a brick wall at once. Mm. <laughs> and that's why I was, I'm never gonna go back there again. Yeah. So that's why I delegated <laughs> and hired more staff to help me. Yeah. So if you are in, what are you doing? 
Me watching movies. What I you watch? love movies. Okay, movies. Um, funny enough, which is random, but my lifelong dream is to be a film director. Really? Yeah. That's what that's what I studied in university. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I studied movies and production and TV. So, but obviously, just went down on that <laughs> right off the top. Hence the music video directing and yeah. I mean, I, I love directing. I've I've directed a lot of videos. I've directed campaigns. I've done yeah. stuff with ASOS and misguided and brands that some people wouldn't even know that I actually directed them because I don't. I, I have not allowed to put them out there sometimes. Sure. Because I've obviously it's their yeah, video. Yeah. But I've done. I do a lot with my, one of my best friends, Adam, and me and him. We directed quite a lot of stuff. So that that's like my passion. That is what. That's my goal. My goal is to. That is my goal, actually. So I, I can tell you my goal. Yeah. Um, my goal is to be a director. That's yeah. what. If, if I could retire and be comfortable, I would love to just direct like movies so. and TV shows and music videos. And so, yeah. so where can people contact you? Your your get in contact with you or find out about your events. About my events. Um. So we've got inside lifestylecom secret partiescom and my Instagram is DJ Chris Wright. So we I'm have always going to be a DJ. Oh, no, no, I'm trying to change it to Chris Wright, but I just can't do it with Instagram. Oh really? I've, I've tried, but like I don't because I obviously set that up when I was yeah. a full time yeah. DJ. I don't DJ a lot anymore. Yeah. I DJ on special bookings. But Chris Wright will be taken, isn't it? Really? Yeah. That's the problem with this. So yeah. when Chris people Wright follow me, they always go, "Oh, you DJ." Yeah. Yeah. Chris Wright, official. I I am a DJ. I'm not a DJ. Yeah. I am a DJ, I still DJ, I just like to do, I just like to save it for big events, sure. like last summer I didn't really DJ a lot, but then I got booked to play with Guetta and um, David Guetta's night at High, so I was like, I, 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 when I post, put that out there and we did Creamfields, it just gives you a bit more of a yeah. hype, whereas back in the day before I had my events company, I used to DJ every night, 30 hours a week, right. maybe more, yeah. every day, every night, and it was just... Like, I wasn't, ex I didn't like, you could see me whenever you wanted, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I kind of try and keep it like, yeah, yeah. not that I'm going to be an amazing DJ, <laughs> but you know what I mean, I'm going to try and keep it like. Well, as someone who has seen you DJ, like, briefly on Christmas Day, everyone was getting up to dance, and he's like, oh, let's sit back down, let's sit down, let's sit down, and you so that... on a song, and everyone's like, oh, sit down. That, that, was, was, that is the first time I actually realised we are in a pandemic, because yeah. I've been DJ like a DJ in Taylor V every now and then on a Friday when we do our events, and I've done a couple of sets in Versace, and we do Cove, but it, everyone's already down, everyone's on tip. So this event, what we did on Christmas Day, as you can tell, it was just like, let's, let's have a party. But then when the security crew was like, you need to get everyone to settle down, I was just like, this, this is, this shit this is, is real. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. like, I was like all excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Christmas Day, we've got fireworks going up. And then I was like, to tell everyone to sit down. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I now know what it feels like for all my all my DJs that work for me yeah. and do all my events. It's it's hard. It's, hard. How it's very feel, hard. Like, just as a you know, if you're trying to entertain people, and usually you get response from the crowd. It, it was frustrating to be mm -hmm. honest because we'd spent so much time trying to promote to get people to come there, and the venue that we did it in was you know it was, wasn't very close to where mm. a lot of the brunches were. So yeah. they travelled specifically for the brand and the event and. To then tell everyone have to sit down. It's it's just disheartening because yeah. you want you can see on those faces they just want to have a good time. Have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do know, but some people are on holiday. That's the challenge that we're having mm. now. The people that live here they respect it, but the people that are on holiday think that they can come to Dubai to get away from that. Yeah. But it actually, it still is here. Yeah. So they need to kind of see that it's not it's not okay to do that. Mm. You need to sort of respect it because we're under a lot of pressure. I mean, we've had yeah. fines. We're literally that's another obstacle which you didn't mention. Mm. We've had fines when the venue's been, you know, one extra person on the table or mm. someone stood up and, this, you know, the government, the government, the, you know, like the, what they call it, the CID, yeah. uh, they're there and they see someone and they're like, he's, he's just danced and you're not allowed to dance and you can't control every single person. Yeah. Yeah. If someone's drunk time. and they want to dance, how the hell can you, you see everyone when there's like a thousand yeah. people in a club or a venue or whatever? So it's hard and the security, I feel so sorry for them. Mm. There's the staff and the, 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 it's just, it's frustrating and you see them and you just think their jobs now are 20 million times harder. I mean, they yeah. used to have to manage people drunk before COVID, mm. now they have to manage people drunk, not allowed to dance, not allowed mm. to go this, put your mask on, do that. Mm. It's a Back very crazy time yeah. and people get offended by it and think that they're being rude and not and being 
a dick basically yeah, 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 yeah. and they're not like mm-hmm. they're just doing the job because there is a pandemic so if you're watching this and you come to my events, please respect the rules because I don't want another fine and if I get a fine and then you don't get your money because that, yeah, that fine yeah. is like your revenue for a month yeah. like genuinely is for one event like it's mm-hmm. It's a lot of money, and people don't see that. Like, some of the venues are getting bigger fines, like, ridiculous fines, and it's Mm. losing them a lot of money because one person stood up. Stood up. (laughs) Stood up. That is uh, a whole other conversation. We're going to leave that. Yeah. But literally, I saw security having to, like, put people down. And then they're not allowed to touch anyone as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sit down. Very gentle, I think. Very gentle. Yeah, I mean, in the UK, I think some people might... Yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely in the UK. I mean, I think the why obviously people respect it and yeah. they respect yeah. the staff and in a country that you know it's tolerance is you know, you've got to respect the rules of Dubai. You know, we're in a different part of the world. Mm. So excellent. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's it's always pleasure. a pleasure speaking yeah. to you. Yeah. I'm going to events. Yes. So guys, don't worry. I'm going to do a list of the best. Chris Wright brunches. These top five. My favourite brunch so far. It's a really a tough one. But I really like Ritz. Okay. I like the French mm-hmm. and the Ritz. Ritz was, Ritz was nice. We enjoyed it. I like the food. And the, and the, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and the entertainment. Versace. It's, it's very different. It's quite it's mature. It's, yeah. a, mature it's a mature crowd, yeah, the Ritz. It's a mature one. <laughs> uh, Mama Zonia. Mama Zonia is good, good view. Good view of music. Good music. Yeah. Um, I'm actually my list on my phone. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm coming. I'm coming as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mixture. Yeah. Look, make it on there. I said Versace. I've been twice. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed today's discussion with Chris. Make sure you do follow him on the Instagram, uh, DJ Chris Wright, and obviously the links will be below. The links will be below, and we'll put all the links and stuff for you guys. But yeah, we'd love to see your comments and feedback, what you think about enjoying yourself in Dubai and some of the best events we've been in. So make sure you get those down below also. Until then, I'm Bianca and self-made. Bye-bye.